Hello, hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and I have an unboxing of Tonic Studios Craft Kit. This is, I think, number 59 and it's called Clocks and Cogs and I am so behind on crafting with my Tonic kits. I still haven't crafted with the, is it called Winter Village? Um, that was the last one I got and I was intending on making some holiday cards with it and that's still my plan but I could not pass this one up because I don't really have too much um, in this sort of theme of timepieces and so it's just really lovely to kind of beef up that that sort of um, type of um, die set or stamp and die set in my stash because I feel like when it comes time to picking maybe florals or cute critters. I have so much to choose from. But when it comes to picking up something that maybe is a little bit more in the vein of like a steampunk or something kind of uh, rustic and and uh, kind of almost grungy. Um, of course, you can actually make these very elegant too. But when I see gears, and things like that. That's that's immediately what I think of. And so it's nice to just have a couple more options than what I um, currently do. So that's why I definitely wanted to keep this kit. So let's, I'll dive into the papers first because I think they kind of uh, show the color scheme really well. This is, this is probably a really good example. Um, so we got a lot of papers and I don't... Okay, yeah, so this is Clocks and Cogs pattern paper. <laughs> so you get two sheets. They are the same. They're double-sided. I would say maybe on the 60-pound or, or uh, lighter uh, side of paper, but it's getting there. It's almost, it's almost a lightweight cardstock. And you have a nice ombre on one side, and this might be a little bit... Um, hard to see on camera, but this has some of that tea stain. It feels, um, doesn't feel, it looks like kind of, um, old paper, parchment paper. That's sort of the, the vibe I get off of that pattern. And then we have our classic card. So these have, um, a nice kind of texture weave on one side and smooth on the other. And we have it in brick red. We've got apricot orange. Ginger pie. That's, these really beautiful colors. Then um, we have ocean blue, which I think is this one, the darker. And then a teal blue. So you can kind of see that's sort of the color palette we're working in. And then we have specialty, um, some specialty cards. So this is a, a foiled craft card. So on, on one side, it's your craft card. And then they foiled this beautiful design. And it's called Rose Gold Blossom. Then we have a specialty card in Sienna Treasure. This is kind of like, um, there's a gold version of this that I think is like gold silk. It's got that, it's got that really... Um, nice texture. It's kind of stripey, um, but it's kind of, um, it's not like a, it's an irregular kind of um, uh, feel to it. So it's, it's just really nice. I like anything that has a little bit of texture to it because it adds just that little bit of interest and the light kind of catches it in different ways. Then we have Mirror Card in Opera Red and also in rose platinum this is that high gloss mirror you can see the reflection i'm not gonna uh, i won't reveal the whole sheet because you'll be able to see my whole room but <laughs> there is that so those are all of our papers and so we have um then nouveau products to go with all of this so this it's fantastic. This is a crackle mousse in water nymph. 
but it's the full size. So I got this little uh, sample pot in an earlier box. I think I looked it up. It was, I think, box 51, if I'm remembering correctly. And I love teal is uh, my favorite color. So even though I kind of already have some of this and it's a bit of a duplicate, I am going to keep this. <laughs> Usually when I have a duplicate of something, I'll set it aside as a giveaway, but I really can't imagine myself going through this and it'll be nice to have a larger pot of it when I do finish this one up. Also, I feel like the crackle mousses, I, they are formulated a little bit differently so that when they dry, they, they have that nice crackle effect. And whatever that formulation is, it does seem as though it's, um, it lasts a little bit longer in the pot once it's open because I have other sample pots um, of just your regular embellishment mousse and they've sort of dried. You can often bring them back to life with some distilled water, but um, but they've sort of dried up in the pot and I and I seal mine with some press and seal um, after every use to give it a nice misting of... Um, distilled water and then seal it with the press and seal but I just don't use all of these um you know Nuvo products often enough which is something I should probably change and so inevitably sometimes they dry up but I'm finding that the crackle mousses do uh do not dry up quite as much I haven't had one dry up on me yet this is a vintage drop and it's in the color bohemian teal which is fantastic loving all the teal that was kind of the other reason why i couldn't resist this uh, this kit because all of the colors are really speaking to me and then we have a uh this is i believe full size of glacier paste in bronze metal so look how well that goes with this ginger paper and it it says bronze but I, I, you know, you can maybe pass it off as um, maybe copper also. But it goes really beautifully with the specialty card too. So everything coordinates really, really beautifully. So we have that. And then we have a shimmer powder. I thought I had just about all of the colors in the shimmer powder, but I double checked and this is one I do not have. It's called Maroon Spark which will go lovely with um, our brick red here and um, with the opera red mirror card. And so shimmer powders, I really love you. You um, don't have to worry about this going bad because it is a powder. So it's not going to um, dry up or, or anything over time. And a little... A little goes a long ways. My favorite way of using it is to just give uh, some watercolor card a light spritz of distilled water. Tap, tap, tap a little bit of powder. You'll start to see it activate, but that light spritzing of water um, on the paper will help it help the powders kind of stick wherever they land. And then you can kind of spritz. And I feel like it, it doesn't quite because you can't really control what happens once you um, activate this with water but that light spritzing initially will sort of help to have the powders uh, stay <laughs> where they were initially put down uh, so that when you go to spritz it you it, you're just expanding and blossoming the color and I feel like there's a little bit less um, movement but there are a lot of different ways to work with the shimmer powder, so it's just fun to experiment. I, I particularly love the ones that are multicolored because you get, um, you know, that that really unexpected, one-of-a-kind look with that uh, because you just never know what you're going to get. And then we get some tools. We get some blending sponges. These are really, really nice. They're super dense and very squishy and they are great for stenciling for applying your nuvo products and i um i just i just wash them and just continue to work with them even though you know some products will stain it but it it doesn't mean that that color it while it stains the sponge it doesn't um kind of transfer onto your next project so your sponge might look 
a certain color, but um, if you've cleaned it thoroughly to where you're kind of squeezing it out and it's just um, clear water running through, then you can just continue to use that on your next project and not have to worry about color transfer. We get a little bit of a freebie this month. There is a stencil that is really gorgeous. So it's um, two designs and you have some really uh, fun gears up here and then just like a little abstract. I see circles and arrows. I don't know if there's a, a different pattern in that, but um, it's almost like a little abstract um, ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's really great and that definitely makes sense why we got some sponges because it's really good to sponge your medium through your stencil. I like that technique in particular because I don't use like a pixie spray or anything to hold down my stencil. So there are times when the medium I've mixed up might be a little bit too runny and if I just take a palette knife to scrape across here, um, it sometimes will run underneath the stencil and then you don't get that really crisp but defined design, you know, the way that the stencil has been cut. And so <clears throat> if you ever find that that's the case for you, like you've mixed your medium or you're using a medium that's like a little bit too liquidy, try using a sponge to apply it through your stencil because, um, the sponge isn't going to deposit quite as much as what a palette knife might if you tried to scrape a palette, uh, your medium through with a palette knife. So, um, so there's the stencil for us. Then, of course, for me, the um, best part is the die set and the stamp set. So, I really, um, I really like, let me, let's take a quick look at the stamp set because I really like the fact that, that we're getting some, some images that you could use as a focal image on your card because a lot of times what we'll get will be sentiments that kind of coordinate, go along with the dies and maybe we'll get small images like this gear. But I, I like the size of the images that we get on this stamp set even though it means fewer sentiments, but I do like that you have that option of these three images. So we've got the hourglass, the key, and an alarm clock. And so it's kind of nice uh, because then you can use this as a focal image on your card and you don't necessarily have to um, die cut and assemble the clocks from your dies. So kind of like that um, that's the case. And I took a quick look at this earlier. I don't think I see coordinating dies to cut out these stamped images, but even though I'm not the best fussy cutter, I think I could probably manage uh, fussy cutting this. Though I did uh, get a brother scan and cut not too, <laughs> not too long ago. And that's really been fantastic for um, times where I have a stamp without coordinating dies. But all of the sentiments um, are really great. They're sort of time related. And so we have time by itself and then different phrases that you can um, combine it with. So for example, time flies when you're having fun, time to relax, um, one day at a time, time to celebrate. This one's nice. Sorry, it's late. Uh, I can imagine actually putting that on the inside of a card, like happy birthday, and then sorry, it's late. Um, so really uh, fantastic, the, the stamp set, I think. So we have that, and then of course, we've got our two sheets of dies. So really, really fantastic. Uh, look at all the dies that you get. And what I particularly love is that there's there's a lot in here that is very geared towards timepieces and <laughs> gears, but there's also a lot of your basic shape dies too. So you can see there's uh, one, two, three, four plain edge circle dies. You've got this circle die that's sort of a, um, a little bit of a wavy pattern. You've got 
this, uh, the middle die here, is also a circle die with kind of the gear grooves, but you could maybe pass that off as almost, you know, that's the, uh, like a stamp, um, postage stamp kind of border design. Um, it can almost pass as that as well. So quite a few, quite a few just circle dies that I think are just going to be great as basic shape dies. And I always appreciate a nice basic shape die because, um, they're really versatile, but you have all of the bits and pieces that you need to decorate up a lot of different types of timepieces. So you've got um, this clock uh, face here, which is sort of that um, style of clock that you would put on your mantle. Um, when my mom hit, I think it was her 30 year work anniversary, I think they gave her a really nice um, clock that had an engraving or something on it. And then you can make a uh, wrist watch. So here's the band for your wrist uh, watch. So this is the the band, just the outline. And this is where your clock face would get attached. There would be that, like that metal rod that, that goes between here. And then um, this piece here, you can inset into your um, one end of your wristband because that's the holes that, that you would put the um, uh, this piece through, your little buckle. And then I think that's that little belly band, you know, that you would tuck the, the one end of your strap under to keep that uh, down. So you have that, you can create um, your own, like a wall mounted clock, of course, because you got all of your different circles here. You have two different size, um, number numbers for your clock face. So you can make the small clock face or a larger clock face and they looks like they are Roman numerals. Is this one numbered? This one might not actually be numbered. This this might just be a sentiment, I think. The, the outer one definitely has Roman numeral numbers. And um, and then there's also um, the chain, if you want to make sort of, <coughs> if you want to, there's also the chain, if you want to make sort of a pocket watch. And this looks like kind of your stopwatch um, little button there. So lots and lots of different ways to create your clock face and the different hands, of course. And it looks like you get different sizes too. Um, so really, really fun set. And then besides all the timepiece related um, dies, we get all of the gears. So this one's really awesome. So this is a, this does not have an inside cutting edge. So it's just the, it's just the gear design um, around the outside. And then you can use any of your circle shapes to kind of mat and layer on top of that. But then you've got individual gears that you can kind of, uh, collage up and, and, uh, layer up on top of these if you want. So really, really fantastic. Um, love, love, uh, this kit and the whole theme of it. I think it's just, it's just really, really nice to have something that's a little bit different from kind of your, uh, florals and your butterflies and not that there's anything wrong with it but I feel like I have like such a good variety to choose from but when it comes to this sort of theme um, I, I think I only have like one clock <laughs> tie um, so it's really nice to be able to uh, have some variety there and and such a basic die set to work from. Thanks so much for joining me today. When I craft with this kit, I will be sure to add it to my Tonic Studios playlist where you'll find all of my projects and haul videos featuring Tonic Studios products. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.